I know, I know a woman who has the same degree and the same job as her husband. When they get back from work, she does most of the housework, which I think is true for many marriages. But what struck me about them was that whenever her husband changed the baby's diaper, she said thank you to him. Now, what if she saw this as perfectly normal and natural that he should, in fact, care for his child? <laughs> I'm trying to unlearn many of the lessons of gender that I internalized when I was growing up, but I sometimes feel very, still feel very vulnerable in the face of gender expectations. The first time I taught a writing class in graduate school, I was worried. I wasn't worried about the material I would teach because I was well prepared and I was going to teach what I enjoyed teaching. Instead, I was worried about what to wear. I wanted to be taken seriously. I knew that because I was female, I would automatically have to prove my worth. And I was worried that if I looked too feminine, I would not be taken seriously. I really wanted to wear my shiny lip gloss and my girly skirt, but I decided not to. Instead, I wore a very serious, very manly, and very ugly suit. <laughs> because the sad truth is that when it comes to appearance, we start off with men as the standard, as the norm. If a man is getting ready for a business meeting, he doesn't worry about looking too masculine and therefore not being taken for granted. If a woman is getting ready for a business meeting, she has to worry about looking too feminine and what it says and whether or not she will be taken for granted, whether or not she will be taken seriously. I wish I had not worn that ugly suit that day. I'd, I've actually banished it from my closet, by the way. <laughs> had I then the confidence that I have now to be myself, my students would have benefited even more from my teaching because I would have been more comfortable and more fully and more truly myself. I have chosen to no longer be apologetic for my femaleness and for my femininity. And I, and, and I, And I want to be respected in all of my femaleness because I deserve to be. Gender is not an easy conversation to have. For both men and women, to bring up gender is sometimes to encounter an almost immediate resistance. I can imagine some people here actually thinking, women too do safe. <laughs> some of the men here might be thinking, okay, all of this is interesting, but I don't think like that. And that is part of the problem that many men do not actively think about gender or notice gender is part of the problem of gender. That many men say, like my friend Louis, that everything is fine now. And that many men do nothing to change it. If you are a man and you walk into a restaurant with a woman and the waiter greets only you, does it occur to you to ask the waiter, why haven't you greeted her? Because gender can be... <laughs> Um, actually, Women Rapper was part of the longer um, version of this talk. So because gender can be, un it can be a very uncomfortable conversation to have, there are very easy ways to close it, to close the conversation. So some people will bring up evolutionary biology and apes, how you know, female apes bow down to male apes, and that sort of thing. But the point is, we're not apes. <laughs> you know, Apes also live on trees and have earthworms for breakfast, and we don't. Some people will say, well, poor men also have a hard time. And this is true. But that is not what this, <laughs> but this, is not what this conversation is about. <laughs> Gender and class are different forms of oppression. I actually learned quite a bit about systems of oppression and how they can be blind to one another by talking to black men. I was once talking to a black man about gender, and he said to me, why do you have to say my experience as a woman? Why can't it be your experience as a human being? Now, this was the same man who would often talk about his experience as a black man. Gender matters, men and women experience the world differently. Gender colors the way we experience the world. But we can change that. Some people will say, oh, but women have 
the real power, bottom power. And for non-Nigerians, bottom power is an expression which I suppose means something like a woman who uses her sexuality to get favors from men. But bottom power is not power at all. Bottom power means that a woman simply has a good route to tap into from time to time, somebody else's power. And then, of course, we have to wonder what happens when that somebody else is in a bad mood, or sick, or impotent. <laughs> so, some people will say that a woman being subordinate to a man is our culture. But culture is constantly changing. I have beautiful twin nieces who are 15 and live in Lagos. If they had been born 100 years ago, they would have been taken away and killed because it was our culture, it was Igbo culture to kill twins. So what is the point of culture? I mean, there's the decorative, the dancing, the, but also culture really is about preservation and continuity of a people. In my family, I am the child who is most interested in the story of who we are, in our traditions, in the knowledge of ancestral lands. My brothers are not as interested as I am, but I cannot participate. I cannot go to Munan meetings. I cannot have a say because I am female. Culture does not make people. People make culture. So if it is in fact true, so, so if it is in fact true that the full humanity of women is not our culture, then we must make it our culture. I think, I think very often of my dear friend, Okoloma Madoewesi. May he and all the others who passed away in that Sosoliso crash continue to rest in peace. He will always be remembered by those of us who loved him. And he was right that day many years ago when he called me a feminist. I am a feminist. And when I looked up the word in the dictionary that day, this is what it said. Feminist, a person who believes in the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. My great-grandmother, from the stories I've heard, was a feminist. She ran away from the house of the man she did not want to marry and ended up marrying the man of her choice. She refused, she protested, she spoke up whenever she felt she was being deprived of access, of land, that sort of thing. My great-grandmother did not know that word feminist, but it doesn't mean that she wasn't one. More of us should reclaim that word. My own definition of feminist is, a feminist is a man or a woman who says, <laughs> a feminist is a man or a woman who says, yes, there's a problem with gender as it is today, and we must fix it, we must do better. The best feminist I know is my brother, Kenne. He's also a kind, good-looking, lovely man, and he's very masculine. Thank you.